Well, hello there. In this video, I'm going to pitch an alternative programming language to C called EmoC. So C as a programming language, as some of you know, is a language that serves many of our purposes pretty well. It runs nice and fast, it allows us to manipulate memory directly, and it gives us a pretty good idea of what the machine is actually doing running our program under the hood. But I've got a few problems with it that I just can't stand, and I'll pull up this Hello World program as an example to address some of my grievances. So first of all, this is wildly space inefficient. This word, fprintf, right here, takes up an entire seven characters of space in our source file. There is no reason that a word this common should be taking up that much space. Second of all, this is just really boring. There's no color to the characters of this language other than the syntax highlighting that isn't even built into the language itself. And also, if I wanted to type a word like while, I just type those letters and I'm done. And this is a bit too easy for me. And as a programmer, I would like a little bit more of a challenge writing out my programs. Well, luckily, EmoC is a language that solves all of my problems with C because this is a language written entirely out of emojis. So um, right here, I am gonna pull up the exact same Hello World program, but implemented in EmoC instead of C. As you can see, the entire program fits in this little space right here. It's so much more compact. And as a language, it's just so much more colorful. It's just so much nicer to look at. So how are you supposed to run this EmoC program? Well, to do that, you need to first download the EmoCC source code, EmoCC being EmoC compiler. And you can do that with a simple git clone of this URL. And I put the URL in the description if anyone wants to follow along. So git clone this URL, and boom, now I have a copy of the emocc source code. Now to compile our hello world program, I'll just run dot slash emocc um, hello world dot emoc dash o hello world, and then run it as so. Boom, runs like butter. Now, what if you wanted your program to print something other than hello world? Well, since we already have the printing functionality in the hello world program, I can just copy that over to a different file. So let's say we want to print out the string emocc is awesome instead. Well, uh, just let's call this file emocc.demo.emoc. And then let's edit this using vim because vim is definitely the editor to be typing emojis in. Uh, so the normal vim uh, keys work uh, just like with any other file. Uh, so the string in emoc uh, is just any characters between these speech bubble emoji. So the hello world string is contained right here between the first and the second speech bubble character. Uh, so to jump to the speech bubble character, all I need to do is just copy and then do an F uh, speech bubble, and that jumps there. Now press L to move right one character, and then do a quick DT speech bubble to delete the existing hello world string. And now we want to replace that with emo CC is awesome. So let's insert those characters. So if you go to the language documentation, uh, in the second table here, we have uh, the escape sequences for each of the typable characters uh, in, that can be used for strings. So to type out the string emo cc is awesome, we just take the C character and encode that using the emo C escape sequence. So let's start with a capital E. Uh, the escape sequence is this do not enter symbol followed by this electricity symbol. So now we have a capital E and we just got to do that for every character in the rest of the string. So E, M, and then O. And then uh, capital C twice. And there we go, we got our first word. Now, of course, we need a space before our second word, so let's put the encoding of the space character in there. And then let's type the word is, so there's the ice cream for the I, and then sushi for the S. And we need another space. And then we gotta type out the word awesome, so A, W, E, 
E S O and this is M, so I'll just copy that. M and E. And let's end our string with an exclamation point. Uh, where is it? There it is, exclamation point. And then let's have a new line. So to do that, we need a backslash and an N. So backslash. N. Boom. Now we've inserted our string. We finished writing our program. Now let's compile it using the same method. So dot slash emo cc, emo cc demo dot emo c dash o emo cc demo. And then run dot slash emo cc demo. Boom. Now we have our new string printed. So obviously this language will be pretty limited if all you can do is print stuff. Uh, so I included another program that adds two numbers together right here. So if I compile and run that, so add two numbers, dot emo c dash o add two numbers, add two numbers, and it's a simple addition program that prompts you for two numbers and adds them together. So as you can see, it correctly calculated that two plus three equals five. So wonderful. And if you want to look into the implementation of this program, and I'm going to pull it up on GitHub because it actually shows the color. Um, if you really look into this, you can see that for literally no reason, uh, it calls a recursive add function. So, but let's say you make a syntax error. So how the heck are you supposed to debug this? Well, it's actually not too difficult if you know how to program in C. So let me introduce a simple syn a syntax error to this add two numbers program right here. So let's delete this final thumbs up. Now, if I try to compile it, it doesn't work because there's some expected declaration or statement at the end of input. So what could have went wrong? Well, the first step of emo CC is to convert your emo C program into C. So if I run this uh, through emo C to C dot pi, uh, add two numbers dot emo C, I'll put that to, uh, let's call it add two numbers dot C, uh, and then pull up the C program. Uh, there's the C, that's the intermediate step in the compilation process. And as you can very clearly see here, uh, this open curly brace here is not matched with a closed curly brace. So the issue is we forgot the closed curly brace to our main function. So to fix that, now we just got to go back to our emo C program. Uh, we know that the closed curly brace is the thumbs up emoji. So let me just find a thumbs up emoji to copy. I'll copy this and then just insert that to the very end of the program. Um, and then let's try running again. Uh, actually, let me run it through emo cc again, and then run add two numbers, and boom, works as it did before. Of course, any good programming language comes with a style guide to try to ensure consistency in style across programmers. So what's the style guide for emo c? Well, there are three main rules to writing good style emo c programs. First, the entire program needs to be on one line. We have the fast forward emoji that maps to the C new line character and white space characters provided in the mappings. So there literally is no reason why you should ever need your program to span multiple lines. And since part of the purpose of this language is to introduce an element of challenge to the program writing process, readers should be similarly challenged decoding and interpreting this one line program. Second, although we provide some emojis for white space characters, they should be used as little as possible. Uh, so for example, if you were to declare some int variable, uh, you would need a space between the int type and the variable name so the C compiler knows how to separate the two. However, if you were to declare an int pointer, you don't need any white space necessary because the asterisks work fine as a delimiter. So you could just do int asterisk variable name in succession with no white space and it'll compile just fine. And at any point where you're able to avoid white space characters, you should do so. The third rule is that typable characters should only ever be used in comments. So uh, let me pull up this hello world program again. As you can see, I have typable characters for documentation purposes, but the actual program code has none. 
And once again, being able to freely type any token of the program just makes the programming process a bit too easy. And so the entire program should be composed of exclusively emoji characters to avoid this. Now, one problem you may run into is that uh, this table has pretty good coverage of some of the aspects that you would likely be using in C, but I'm sure there's a ton missing from there. Uh, so what if there's some C token you want to use that isn't provided in this table? Well, uh, the less preferred approach would be to just write that in using typable characters in the source code. Uh, so for example, let's say uh, you wanted to use the popen uh, function. Uh, popen is not one of the tokens supported in this current version of emocc. Uh, let's say specifically, just for sake of demonstration, uh, that's the wrong file, for demonstration that you want to replace this fprintf with popen. It's not going to compile because like popen takes different parameters, but let's just, for sake of demonstration, make this substitution. So let's do an fprinter uh, and then semicolon twice to jump to this specific printer and just type popen right here. And boom, when emo C gets translated into C, the popen will show up in the C code. But obviously, this isn't preferred because this breaks style guide rule three. Now you have typable characters in your program where we want to avoid those as much as possible. So the better approach for introducing popen is to add, assign an emoji to that word that isn't currently used. So. I decided to put my uh, my assignment in um, p open char uh, just this file. So I'm just going to copy that into my clipboard. Then, if you open emoc to c dot json, and just uh, in this mappings stanza, if you scroll to the bottom of that, this is how the emoc c compiler uh, translates emoc into c. Uh, so we'll just add a new. Um, mapping. So let's just add this and we'll map that to the keyword p open and then save that. Uh, and then in our add to numbers program, uh, instead of writing uh, the word p open, we can just paste in the emoji that we assigned to p open and it'll work the exact same. And we didn't need to introduce any typable characters to the program. Now, whenever you add a new entry to the JSON file, uh, the readme also actually automatically regenerates if you do a make refresh. So I'll do a make refresh. Obviously, add two numbers to not compile because popen doesn't take those arguments. Uh, but now if we open up the readme, scroll to the bottom of this table, as you can see, popen, there's now an entry to that. And whenever you add support for any new emoji, if you do a make refresh, the documentation will automatically update. And finally, just to show off something cool, um, I actually have an implementation of the Tufts University uh, CS40 UM assignment right here. Uh, as you can see, this entire program fits all on one screen. So you can have some really complicated programs all fit in one screen, so you don't need to scroll around to edit. And though I am blurring this just in case for some reason someone decided they wanted to copy this for their implementation. And just to demonstrate the fact that uh, there is no sacrifice in performance by using emoc, uh, let me just compile it using the usual um, way. So emocc-um-emoc-o um, and then the normal uh, compilation for GCC compilation flags work. So dash o three for maximum performance. And then let's uh, time running this emoc um implementation through Sandmark. So uh, this is the big benchmark used in this assignment. As you can see, this took a total of less than seven seconds. So in conclusion, I think all of us C programmers need to switch from C to emo C because uh, it sacrifices no performance so we can write programs just as fast, but our programs will be that much more colorful. And thus, I rest my case.